Hey folks, Mark Allen back out here on the range. This is the Springfield SA35. Now, um, after sessions uh, two, three, four, I think three, four, five of our review, and um, <clears throat> we're gonna do a little different kind of testing today. We're gonna put another 100 rounds through. This is gonna be the first shooting since we had the fail or the malfunction that we had. Uh, that was uh, a few days ago, and uh, we're going to put a hundred rounds through first, then we're going to do a special test if we get through this, okay. Trying to give the microphone a chance to recover, so a <laughs> um, we'll, couple of things I'm, I'm noticing, um, real good accuracy, um, recoil, everything like that is, uh, is uh, as we would expect, um, very cold out uh, for November in Indiana today, um, but it, everything here so far just seems very good, seems uh, seems uh, very normal um, we do have some ammunition here I'm thinking it's maybe just a little bit on the light side uh, this particular uh, batch but uh, this is Remington 115 grain um, we've got a different test coming up but we're gonna finish out this hundred rounds I want to see if I can take that red circle out of that target out there We've been doing something different today. We've been going with uh, a little slower pace of shooting. I'm letting the heat build up and I've been watching those empty shell casings uh, get closer and closer and um, there is a reason for this. We did put in the SFS system, we did put in the uh, 30 pound um, mainspring on the SFS hammer strut and uh, that uh, 
I'm sure is a stouter spring than uh, I'm sure it's a stouter spring than uh, the original mainspring that uh, Spring Field had sprung this with. And that malfunction right there, this was a very much a short cycle. This is a, uh, a slide velocity uh, question, basically. Um, we may lighten up the uh, recoil spring up to a 15 pound. That's what we would do in a, uh, in say, an Arcus. Uh, and that may be the exact right prescription that uh, needs to be done here. We're going to go ahead, we're going to stop. And uh, we're going to install a 15 pound uh, high power recoil spring, see if uh, we get better extraction distance. Okay, and we have changed recoil spring to the VH 15 pound recoil spring. Um, and we didn't get the camera turned back on to finish up that last little hundred there, but um, everything was kind of, you know, just a little bit better extraction than before. I changed ammunition. I got a 15 round magazine with some Winchester white box in it. It's been one of the hotter ammunitions we've had lately. I want to see if there's a difference in our extraction uh, before we go any further with a different ammunition. So that's what this 15 here is about. Really nice looking target out there actually. Kind of fun on a cold day. We're going to uh, yeah. All over the center of that target. Lots and lots of backyard there or barn or whatever that is behind the uh, target. Okay folks, we're back out again. Another magazine of 15 round Winchester. And Hey guys, Mark Allen, BH Spring Solutions LLC and BHSpringSolutions.com, and we are back again from another session of High Power University. Continuing an evaluation and analysis of the Springfield SA35. Um, we have decided to call an audible in our uh, testing, uh, looking back at our objectives, uh, which is um, of this entire evaluation and analysis, which is to um, d determine compatibility of BH Spring Solutions advanced high power components in the Springfield SA35 as well as to determine the suitability for um, use of the platform, uh, the Springfield platform uh, slide and frame for uh, the BH Master Advanced Masterpiece high power uh, series of pistols that we do in the BH Custom Shop Service Department. Going to address something here we've not addressed so far. If we had had anything come up really in the uh, process that we've done so far that would have eliminated the uh, the Springfield SA35 from our consideration and if we'd had you know a bunch of things that were incompatible or um, we found any kind of uh, you know sort of catastrophic slide frame issues um, that you know were not correctable 
um, we would not have needed to get to the point that we're going to be talking about now. What I want to talk about with you right now is essentially some of the finish work that is involved with the uh, Springfield and and not to be dramatic about this or anything like that but this is sharp we got some sharp real sharpness right here too you're going to notice how that sharp edge lands on my hand right there you see the cut that cut was last saturday today is this saturday so that's a week old that happened when i shot 300 consecutive this is not your traditional hammer bite this is a laceration in the hand that happened as a result of the frame and it is and i'm not a guy that you know like i gotta have my hand as high as i can possibly get it you know whatever um if you're one of those guys and you have a springfield um and you're one of these guys that really loves to get up there and get cozy with that beaver tail well i'll tell you what you man up okay and see how you like it because um this uh this this went fairly deep and uh this, like I say, this is a week later, and that was done by the edge of the slide in the frame. We have a lot of edges on this pistol like that because I don't think there was a deburring process. Um, and if it was, it didn't work very well. Right here, we have an edge. I guess you could call it an edge, but that is more like a knife. Um, you could cut your fishing line with that in an emergency. Um, so... And, and the whole pistol is like this, your slide rails, your flame, your frame rails, um, everything that I'm observing, very, very sharp edged. It's difficult to judge uh, things like um, slide velocity and, um, and to um, zone in on um, spring setup, um, primarily because without having you know these edges and things and i'll go ahead and uh, we'll just take a look at the frame edges the slide uh, rails and so forth and i'll show you what i'm talking about these edges right here those are just they're just very very sharp the edge under here very sharp this edge here is very sharp this is a point that you you can go right through your skin with that edge um, everywhere on the uh, the slide in the frame areas um, uh, here on this edge this edge like all the edges um, you do have some refinement right here on the edge of the slide on that edge um, but uh, again you know generally speaking your edges are very very sharp these slide serrations these are literally quite sharp um, I've got a little place here on my uh, on the uh, side of my uh, finger where I tend to hug those slide serrations um, again those are those are they're just they're just sharp and uh, so what we've done is we're going to stop our um, we're going to stop our live fire testing for today long enough we're going to disassemble slide frame and we have uh, we have a tumbling process that I believe we can use on the slide in the frame. We probably are going to be uh, substantially a different looking gun, but it's going to require a refinish for sure. Um, uh, no matter how we smooth out these edges um, everywhere, and believe it or not, I'm going to leave the sights in because these sights have got some pretty seriously sharp edges too, and it, I think it's not going to hurt them a bit to. Uh, to at least go through maybe an hour, two hour tumbling process and um, see if we can <clears throat> add some refinement. <clears throat> That's also going to be some smoothing on these corners, edges of the uh, slide and frame rails. And at that point, I think we're going to have a different interaction between the slide, the frame. I know we're going to have a different interaction between this frame area and my hand. Um, because uh, uh, there's no way for me to continue shooting this unless, you know, it's with shooting gloves, uh, which I do have and I don't mind doing, but I have to tell you, we will never be sending out a BH Advanced Masterpiece High Power from the BH Custom Shop Service Department with um, this kind of presence, frankly, anywhere on the gun um, of the sharp edges that we have and that we've uh, come to know and, uh, and not love too much. So anyway, we're going to do that. And we're going to get back to um, High Power University and some live fire testing. Hopefully, we're hoping that we've got our deburring process figured out that we're going to use on this. And um, there's only one of two ways this can go. Either uh, function is going to get uh, slicker. Um, these edges of the frame are going to get kinder and gentler. 
or we're going to remove too much metal and everything's going to be too loose and sloppy and we're going to have to start over again with another Springfield SA35. So that's kind of the implications, the risk that we're taking. We hope you join us next time. We'll let you know how this turned out. I'm Mark Allen, BH Spring Solutions LLC and bhspringsolutions.com for High Power University and our special sessions evaluating uh, the Springfield SA35 High Power. Hey folks, Mark Allen, BH Spring Solutions LLC, and we're out with continuing testing of the Springfield SA35. And I'm gonna show you a quick picture of it. This is a little bit of a new look. Um, we deburred the slide in the frame completely. Um, before we did this, we had really sharp edges on the uh, entire handgun. And the worst part about it was, and, it's, and it was a problem getting worse, um, was we were having a hard time with slide cycling and we had gotten to the point where we had put the lightest spring setup, meaning recoil spring and mainspring, and we were having short cycling. And this is extremely abnormal in uh, the high power pistol. And we decided that to really, you know, since the handgun showed uh, signs that, you know, maybe deburring had not been happening or did not happen at the point of manufacturing, that means you take all the sharp edges off. Um, everywhere. What we did in the extractor channel is kind of a whole different, uh, like a de-snaggle tooth burring, uh, but um, just there had not been a general deburring. This has implications in the high powers uh, slide and frame tolerances, and I wanted to show you this because we were shooting this exact same spring setup um, just uh, two days ago, yesterday morning, and I'm standing here and this, what you see on the ground here, these empty shell casings, this is where a lot of them were going. And um, many of them right here, yes, they were literally, I'm holding you know, the handgun here, just above the corner of this little column. And I've got a lot, a host of uh, these. Now, when you see back further, these are um, all that I've shot since uh, 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 the deburring of the uh, handgun. We're still with the same spring setup that we were with when we laid all of these down. I've put a marker out here. This is eight feet. So I've tried to set the camera and I want to just check and make sure our camera is still running. Um, I've tried to set the camera so you're actually able to see this extraction distance. And again, the only thing that's changed is with respect to what you're seeing now is just deburring of the slide and frame rails and um, so far in our testing it's made quite a difference and uh, we went ahead we had some questions uh, are your uh, is our the BH advanced threaded barrel compatible with the SA35 so we went ahead and threw one of those in here uh, that was among the questions that we had gotten in the last couple days about the uh, Springfield specifically so I've loaded a hundred rounds this is Remington 115 grain and um, we're going to see what our slide velocity now is like after the deburring as compared to uh, we had a couple of short cycles and we left this field like you know right here beside me so we're going to see what happens we're going to get a loaded magazine Uh, I hope that showed up in the video because I'm telling you, that was like dead on eight feet. This is the normal SFS mainspring, hammer strut spring uh, that's driving the hammer. That also causes resistance on the, the slide when the slide has to cock the hammer. And our 17 pound progressive recoil spring. That eight feet extraction distance right there, that is spot on. What we would expect with this spring setup in any um, FN Browning, um, any of the look-alike uh, clones, um, the Tissos BR9 for that matter, um, we would expect that, that's the extraction distance right there. Um, and literally anywhere between say five and nine feet, four and nine feet, even up to ten, this range is all just fine. That happens to be exactly what we expect to see from this uh, spring setup. be about seven feet. About seven feet.
quite, quite consistent. Very consistent that way. That must probably about seven. Back to about seven. I'm, I'm very, very, very pleased at this point. What a difference in slide cycling that um, deburring this sliding frame made. And even better at this point, hoping I don't jinx anything, we're getting very good consistency out here where these are landing. They're landing and everything I've thrown out there already has been within about a 20 inch diameter. That means our extractor is holding um, particularly well. This is an FN Browning um, extractor, uh, BH extractor spring. And I think this is about the most consistent we've seen so far. Our uh, extraction distances, definitely the way the slide is now cycling, this, it just makes so much more sense to us. I can't tell you how, uh, how good of a sign this is for the, for the Springfield. Got a couple of magazines through and well I tell you I sure am feeling it I'm just feeling really really good about what's happening here after you know kind of the way things started and we got off to a rocky start this is really really good stuff uh, if you notice what I'm doing here the, the threaded barrels have thread protectors on them I've left the thread protector on here so I'm kind of tightening it up as we uh, as we go because they will loosen themselves up when you fire Folks, I am really, really liking how this handgun is uh, functioning right now. I'm going to take the camera out real quickly. Uh, boy, I can't tell you what. Uh, it's just made us feel so much better about this handgun since we deburred it. There was a black circle right there 
that's now gone. And boy, I tell you, I am really feeling awfully, awfully, awfully good. See through the backyard. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I am feeling really, really, really good about the uh, accuracy we're getting out of this uh, Springfield uh, with the setup that we've got going on. Um, I, I just uh, the slide cycle rate is is just just doing what we want it to do, and the uh, consistency of where the extracted empty shell casings are landing is just uh everything since we've you know just that little bit of calming down of all those sharp metal edges all over the place in this handgun has just really seemed to have done wonders and just just seems like it's just bringing this thing in so uh folks thanks for watching out here in the uh shooting range hey folks we're going to make a quick wrap up here for this uh segment of uh, High Power University and um, our special series of uh, uh, focused on the Springfield SA-35. That is from out on the range at that 100 rounds that you just saw shot. And um, man, I want to tell you, I, I am just feeling this handgun now. And I have to also say one other thing. Um, the, the performance of the handgun. Um, as you just saw it on that video where you could see how incredibly consistent the extraction distance was and um, you know, no stoppages, no malfunctions, um, that was just, um, yeah, what can I say, that was, um, that was, that was good. Um, I don't know if you saw it or not, but, but um, in that 100 rounds, there was actually one irregularity. The irregularity was at the end of one magazine with one round left in the magazine, um, the slide locked back. And I didn't even notice it until I dropped the magazine and was laying it down. And then there, here's a, a round. And I went back and watched. And, um, and uh, that is what happened. Here's what I've noticed. Um, and again, this is not a big deal. But I want you to see that slide stop. The positioning of the slide stop uh, and what had been what had been allowed to happen was the slide stop had gotten up to just about like that. It wasn't like fully up in its notch. It was just like right on the edge. Now that is a symptom of something, and we're going to explain what that is uh, here in just a moment. But it was just about like that when I looked at the uh, when I looked at the slide and you dropped the when, after I had dropped the magazine out. Here's one round left in the magazine. This would be improper function. It happens because there's not um, affirmative or decisive enough. Uh, influence on the slide stop by the guide rod. Um, this is decent. It's okay. It only happened once, but we want to see that guide rod really pop down there with some authority. This is just kind of so-so. Uh, it's not really authoritative. Um, uh, your recoil spring guide rod is what governs this. Uh, for this reason, we're going to go ahead and test um, going forward with a different recoil spring guide rod than the OEM from uh, from Springfield. Um, it really should be, we would think, holding um, more, than, uh, more than that at this point. However, um, no kidding, that the way this handgun is now performing, or it just did in that last hundred rounds, um, this is more like what we um, see after we um, put all BH advanced uh, high power components into a handgun and we go shooting or something we've made into a BH advanced masterpiece. This is the kind of performance what you just saw and I can't tell you how incredible that uh, is um, from our perspective. I'm going to be back with just another few closing thoughts here at this segment at this stage of our um, of our uh, testing and analysis and it's going to be specifically about the job that Springfield did on this uh, SA-35 so uh, we're going to break here for a second we'll add this uh, next segment into the video